What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we break down the biggest gaming news topics of the week, and as always, I can't do this alone, I need the Marsman crew along with me. So to my left is Langella Kill. What's up everybody? And to my right is Haki. Hey guys. So listen, as you guys all know, if you if you haven't watched this, this series before, we cover the biggest news of the week and this is actually episode seven so we've been doing uh, several of these episodes and you can always go back and check out the old episodes on on youtube on our channel um and we just call we cover a lot of the biggest news topics for every single week and we give our opinions on some key questions that i always bring up and sometimes we do get our discord questions too so we try to answer anything from our community and you can always reach out to me on discord and on twitter you can send me questions through there and the marsman crew will definitely answer that to the best of our ability so biggest news topic of the week and i think everyone here can agree to this was god of war ragnarok was released and uh, well the date was finally released as in do we know about when the date it's going to be officially shown um and basically a few days ago we saw that sony had officially released a cg announcement trailer around 30 seconds in length i had an entire reaction video about it um showing that it's going to be releasing around november 9th and uh, it's going to be on PlayStation consoles, most likely to have a PC release at a later time, just because most of the new uh, Sony releases have been going to PC because they realize that that's a lot of money over there. So I think a lot of people would be jumping into that. And obviously, when this announcement came out, the Internet blew up. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, God of War is a major franchise. A lot of people are were, were looking for God of War to come out. Because of the fact this year, we didn't really get a lot of new releases. Essentially, I, me, including myself, I thought that Elden Ring is, was going to cakewalk, moonwalk through the game of the year, uh, and, you know, title itself. And I thought that God of War, if it wasn't Starfield, would be a game that would match that star potential. Um, and essentially, now that this game is set to release this coming fall, it does kind of set up that mano a mano, who's going to be the game of the year contender. Now, granted, we, we and here's the big thing. Fans are going nuts to the point where before the official date was released, there were people sending nudes out to developers to try to convince them to send out the release. And I'm not joking. I'm not I'm not BSing here. The developer, uh, Santa Monica Studios, literally had to come out and say, this is not appropriate. If you really thought that sending a nude to one of our writers or one of our developers was going to get you the, uh, you know, get you access to the release date you're sadly mistaken and so when uh, they finally released this out you know it got a lot of positive reviews and i was one of the people who said hey i'm really happy to see the god of war is finally got a release date but the only negative or really the only thing i'm concerned about is there was no up to this point there has not been a single gameplay walkthrough of any kind they did show some glimpses of some gameplay like maybe a year ago during uh during one of those conferences and uh it just we didn't have we have not seen anything really and and unfortunately that's the only concern i have just because when you're only showing cinematic cg trailers you're not going to give the the consumers the gamers that look of is this game near completion like you know like for instance halo infinite when they showed off the gameplay fans were concerned they saw that they looked at it and they say this is not ready for launch and so 343 three took a step back and said, we're going to have to delay this because we want to make sure everything looks good. Without any gameplay, you know, that's not a good look. Like, I, And that was kind of one of the concerns I had. Um, and I kind of want to add that for you guys and say, are you concerned that there has not been a single glimpse of gameplay for God of War? Um, and I already said for mine, like, you know, I, I am concerned. I, I think that this is an issue. And if they don't show us gameplay, and hopefully they have like a conference that just talks about, god of war and like this is everything god of war we have for you to show you today some story elements some gameplay just to give you know me as well as others that are concerned ease i right? know that they're all good because i am concerned i think that when you don't show any sort of gameplay at all it gets people like i'm not like i don't know what this game's gonna look like i don't know if if, if it's gonna be ready and uh, i would like to see that so langelo kill i'll let you go first here are you concerned there has not been a single glimpse of gameplay up to this point um definitely some concern and uh you know i, I talked about this I, I didn't think god of war was going to come out this year because of the lack of gameplay and the lack of, of discussion with it although the developers kept saying that it is going to come out this year now we have the date but if we don't see any gameplay again my kind of rule of thumb is if you don't see any gameplay by the end of summer 
um, it's hard for me to see uh, the game coming out this year. Um, so again, I'll give them to the end of August, but if we don't see any gameplay, it's one of two things. Number one, they're not ready to show gameplay or number two, um, that kind of fear of showing gameplay and having the community uh, or everybody kind of dissect it and, uh, um is a real fear and we've been hearing that a lot from gaming companies now that they kind of don't want to show gameplay unless they have to um so it's one of those two decisions i don't think either of them are great ones um but again it, it's great news that a god of war is coming out my concern about the gameplay is not so much will this game be a good game you know god of war has yet to put out a bad game um but my concern is going to be is this going to be closer to kind of a DLC for God of War versus a full-fledged uh, new installment. And mm -hmm. that's the only concern that I have as of right now. And it's just because, you know, they could easily, you know, prove me wrong um, just by getting more about God of War um, mm -hmm. instead of the two-minute, you know, CGI trailer. And, you know, it looks great. I mean, they have a great, so you know, they have a great <laughs> graphics and stuff like that. But, you know, those questions still linger, um, even based on what they told us. Yeah, and and uh, I know Haki, you you haven't played God of War, but are you concerned that you haven't seen anything gameplay wise from this? Yeah, so uh, I haven't played God of War just because I haven't owned uh, PlayStation after PS2, right? So again, you know, I'll grab some money and, and probably scoop up a PS5 in the next year or so. Yeah, hopefully if you if you can find one, but uh, yeah. I'll go to you because you'll just get it for me, and then I'll just throw you the dough. <laughs> but. Um, since I've opened up my uh, genre of games, I guess you, you can say, um, if I do get a PS5, I will definitely get God of War. Um, I know it's one of the biggest titles that um, PS5 uh, and then Sony has, uh, but kind of like what Angelica has been saying for the last couple of podcasts when we did uh, mention God of War, the lack of gameplay, uh, real gameplay, is a little concerning. Um, and what I'm going to say is they have to come out with a full game a lot of post pandemic games have been kind of uh lacking um very laggy and stuff like that so i think as long as they come out with a full game whether it is this year you know they kind of postponed it a year already or if it's you know the beginning of next year i just want full games from now on from every studio yeah and, and i kind of piggyback on bo both you guys said and let jill kill mention this and i was going to talk about it later too was the original reports about Ragnarok was that it was actually supposed to be a DLC, but there was more content than what a standard DLC would look like, so they kind of changed it to be the sequel versus it being just an expansion. Um, and the question I have is, like, are you concerned that this this game will be too small? Like, maybe it'll be a complete but small game. Like, do you think that's the issue that could happen with this game? Now, what I mean by that is think of Miles Morales, like Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, granted... The expansion was great. It had a lot of great reception. Miles Morales is a great character for Spider-Man and a lot of cool mechanics that they did add in the game, but it was extremely short. It was not a full-fledged game. They basically took Spider-Man, kind of worked, kind of touched up the look and appearances and put Miles Morales on that and kind of just had some new, like, added mechanics for him. Didn't necessarily have a long game whatsoever. Um, so that's kind of the fear of what it is. Are you fearful that this is not really a real sequel to God of War or more just an expansion painted as a sequel. Um, so I kind of want to get your opinion. And Haki, you just talked to us about, you know, you want full games, right? So would you be okay if they did come out with something like that? Like an expansion that's like kind of like a sequel? It's like in between the DLC and a, and a full-fledged game? Or would you be, are you concerned at all this could be that? Or do you think it's just like, nah, this is a full game? No, I mean, so I, again, yeah, I'm, I'm for full games, however long it takes, you know, uh, it can't be just a DLC. If it if they if they did so much work that they were like, oh, it might not be a DLC now. Now it's a full game. Hopefully they went even further and actually made it not just a little bit longer than oh, this is just a DLC. But maybe they hopefully they actually went you know all the way to make a full fledged like new game. You know, mm -hmm. a total. So I'm not for DLCs. I don't want to pay thirty or forty bucks for a DLC. Give me a new game if i have to pay 70 bucks for it it better be a brand new game and full length i feel you and let jill kill what's your opinion here well again um i'm expecting very similar mechanics similar graphics to the first one and you know that's not a bad thing you know every sequel doesn't have to reinvent the wheel um but 
it's just have to have enough content. And that's kind of going to be the big question or concern is content. Um, that's kind of what, you know, the good developers put out versus the ones that have been struggling, right? We talk about all these different games that have come out post pandemic and the ones that have failed usually is because of the lack of content. Um, or if they're broken and I don't expect, you know, I don't expect this game to be broken. That would be a real shocker to me if this developer, but we've seen great developers, you know, put out a bad product uh, with this pandemic. I mean, look at CD project red, right? Um, so again, it's not out of the question, but I think my more concern would probably be how much content is really going to be in this. Um, I do anticipate the mechanics and the graphics to be the same. And again, that's not the issue. It's will there be, DLC content or will there be a full fledged new game content? And, you know, again, when you just don't get that much information, those concerns are going to be there. Yeah, no, I, and that is, that is something that like, I don't think this is going to be a DLC. I think this will be a full game. I, I, I know that there's been a lot of fanboyism out there that says, you know, it's just a DLC and I, I get it. The early reports of this was not really appealing. Um, but I don't think that Sony would do that to a large franchise like God of War. Now, granted, they kind of did that with Miles Morales, but they didn't call Spider-Man 2, like, and say, yeah, this is yeah. this new Spider-Man. They just said, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and this is, like, what you got. And I feel like that's okay. It's just, don't tell me it's a full game. I know some people are like, oh, it's a full game. Like, it's not. It's a it's expansion. It's a great expansion. Um, and nothing wrong with expansions. It's just, don't call it the full game. Like, we've seen Witcher Wild Hunt had, like, the greatest expansions in, like, the history of gaming. That Each one of them was fantastic. It had a lot of content, and it was great stories. So I, I don't mind that. It's just don't lie to me and tell me it's a full game if it's not. Um, so last thing, and this is hard to tell you, I, I kind of want to get a bold take here. Do you think that God of War Ragnarok can stand to Elden Ring for game of the year contention? I'll get my bold opinion here first. If I had to choose between the two, I think Elden Ring would win. I think Elden Ring uh, would win. And now granted, this is a bold take because we haven't even seen God of War Ragnarok. We haven't seen gameplay or anything. But if I'm taking the comparison between God of War, you know, just a few years ago, God of War, like the return, I, I can't, there's no title next, it just says God of War, and Elden Ring right now, I think Elden Ring would win because of the fact there's so much stuff to do in that game that it's like, it feels like it's like, you haven't seen that in a, such a long time, a game that has so much to do, an open world that is full with stuff and difficult, and it's like, you know, it's fun. And, and challenging and and there's just a lot of stuff and i just feel like elden ring with the hype that was built behind elden ring i think it would win i think god of war would easily become the second best game of the year if they hit the marks and that's the big thing they hit their key pieces that god of war normally does with story gameplay the look of it and the in the voice acting um then you're good right and music i think you're good but if you're standing up with elden ring i think elden ring will win because of just the hype level that Elden Ring had and it literally took over the year. Like it literally, that was the only game that came out and it controlled everything in gaming for Lily for oh even now. Like it's still it came out in what in February March. It came out February around February, that time February March and it's still like that easily the highest played game and everyone's still talking about it to a high level. Like that's that's the reason why I think it would carry over. And God of War the release date November 9th is is perfect right around the time they start voting for game of the year contention. But you won't get to see the full effect of God of War over an entire year versus Elden Ring. You've noticed how much this game has impacted the gaming industry based on how much people have played it. Um, now, Langella Kill, your bold take. Do you think this stands up? Do you think God of War sneaks in and steals? Because remember, everyone said Red Dead Redemption 2 was going to run away with the game of the year title. Then God of War came out and just freaking cakewalked right to that thing. Do you think that this happens a second time, God of War? Walks in and wins against Elden Ring now? You know, it's a very good point that you made about Red Dead Redemption 2 and what God of War did. Um, I do think it'll compete, but I, again, I, I really wish we saw more gameplay before this kind of conversation happened. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to go on their reputation and the way they put out games. I definitely think it will compete, but I do think, you know, voters are kind of funny. They, they don't want to give... There's a couple things. Number one, what's going against God of War is the sequel issue. Is sequels are really hard to master or be better than its original original game. And so the first God of War one game of the year, this one is going to be up against the wall because it's going to be compared to the original. 
and uh, it's hard. This game could be good, but it might not match up to the first game, um, which will hurt it. Um, the second thing is I do think people will get kind of tired of giving the same game company uh, a game of, uh, of the year type of thing. And so to me, I think Elden Ring will be ahead because, you know, people don't want to, you know, give that same, if they're the same, they're not going to, you know, lean towards uh, God of War. They're going to give it to Elden Ring. And I think that's two things that are going against God of War. Um, not to say that Elden Ring doesn't deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. And in even a normal year, um, Elden Ring, should compete for for a game of the year because it was that vast but i do think because of the gaming industry what they're doing like the free to play games the unfinished games i do think elden ring has been elevated above even a little bit more than probably it should be i mean people were calling it the perfect game and it is far from perfect there is a lot of bugs and glitches and and stuff like that that you know it, it's not a perfect game but because when you see around it um what other gaming companies were putting out like Elden Ring does look like a perfect game because it's a complete game. Um, so I don't think in the historic context, Elden Ring is as perfect as everyone says, but I do think Elden Ring is going to be ahead of the pack, but I disagree about what you said about, I think the timing helps God of War. I know you said you won't get the full grasp of a year, but people tend to like, like the in the now moment. And if God of War comes out in November um, and it's a good game, people are going to, you know, it, it February is a long time ago. They're not going to remember the joy and how good Elden Ring was because in November, God of War is out. So well, I do think it'll compete, but I do think Elden Ring, at the end of the day, probably wins. I think the other thing, too, and I'll, I'll jump, I'm going to jump to you, Hockey, on this, too, um, is also national appeal. I think, like, because if you think about it, God of War is only narrowed to Sony until PC players get to play it. And I think the Elden Ring is a cross-plat, so that might give them a little bit of an edge because more people experienced it. And I agree with you, man. I, I, I think that I, I could see that other perspective about the in and now. I just think Elden Ring has more has more people a have access to it. And I think that and might it's be... New. Yeah. Elden Ring's new. God of War, again, is a sequel, right? So it's yep. going to... First off, it has to compete with the original. And then it's got to compete, obviously, with Elden Ring. I don't know if it could do and, both. And Haki, so what do you think? I know you're a big Elden Ring stan, so this might be hard for you to, to yeah. say God of War. So what do you think, man? Yeah, so uh, you know, fresh in the uh, in the in the playground of uh, RPG or whatever Elden Ring is considered. What, what's Elden Ring considered? It, it, uh, it's an it, it open world. Open it's an open really, world. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not an RPG. Technically, it's role play. Well, technically, you could you could consider it a role playing because it's actually you take it, you choose actions and you build up your character yeah. and traits like that. Because that that's the one big debate a lot of people say is like you know we you know. People would always debate what's an RPG. Technically, Elden Ring would be an RPG because you pick your traits, you pick your character, you pick your build, like all that stuff, and that's different. Um, and you make choices. Like, uh, you know, uh, technically, like even Horizon wouldn't be considered an RPG because all the actions result in the same thing. There's no choice in changing. So that was always the big debate that people had. But so, yeah, so keep going, dude. What yeah, do you guys so, say? Um, so, you know. The thing about Elden Ring, uh, at least for me, is it you know completely changed my whole thinking of, of video games just in general. I've always been a shooter. Um, I think I have a little bit of a bias just because I have not played God of War. I know um, how big of a title God of War is. Um, and I mean, you both came up with some good points, but uh, I think what Langelic Hill said was that you know it comes out right at the end of the year. So if it hits on the mark, kind of like Mars, uh, Marsman said, if it hits on that mark uh and it's you know huge and it's a full game and the graphics are fantastic it could make a run uh, but again it it does need to compete to um you know it's it's uh first sibling right god of war yeah. one so that's the that's the biggest thing it needs to overcome that and again mars just like you said it's just for ps5 right and and then well, yeah, all, yeah yeah all, all sony consoles first and then pc will come later so that's that's after that's after the voting is done and everything so Essentially, you're only narrowing it down to a certain group of people that will be able to play it, let alone play it on PS5, right? There's not, there's, that, that's even a more restricted list. So you're playing it on PS4. Now, granted, I'm sure it's going to look great on PS4 too, but it's just like you're narrowing down the field of how many people are going to play it and have an opinion on it. But at the end of the day, it's not even just as necessary about fans. It's going to be about the writers who yeah. make the decision. So yeah, yeah. I say that now, but like, you we, know, we've seen, we've seen exclusives yeah. win. Game of the year. Yeah, we, we no, of course we've seen that a bunch yeah. of times. Um, so 
so that that yeah, so that's kind of the big thing. I'll, let's move on though. Let's jump to the new biggest, uh, next biggest topic, and that's Rockstar Games announces that they will be diverting all the resources to making GTA 6. So uh, Rockstar officially had announced that they were putting all their on, putting hold onto remasters of, of Red, Dead, uh, Red Dead Redemption One and remasters of uh, GTA 5 or remakes of re GTA 5 so they can put all the resources and making the new installment of GTA 6. Uh, some people think that, you know, the, obviously with the fact that the classic trilogy that they made, uh, how horrifying that game came out, where there was so many bugs, the game barely looked like it was updated at all. It looked like it was still a PS2 game, uh, or like an original Xbox game that was just kind of put HD graphic, put HD quality on it, and just said, all right, slap the sticker on it, charge a max price, and let's let's just call it a day. Um, with all that and everyone freaking out over this, they need to come up with a new IP to get people happy with them again and maybe make them excited. Um, so it sounds good and all, but the <laughs> other thing I'm thinking about is when the hell is this game going to come out? Rockstar is infamous for taking 10 to 15 years to ever come up with anything new. It's always been the same crap, same stuff. And the, I say crap, but I, it's great content they're making here. GTA and Red Dead Redemption is great. But it's staying the same stuff for like 10 years. Like GTA 5 Online for 10 years straight. Like, let's come up with something new. Like, and that's kind of the big thing. And I, 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 do, I want to ask you guys first, do you think this is a smart move by Rockstar to say, all right, let's get all of our resources and let's push it toward a new GTA game? Hockey, what do you think? Yeah, so like I said before, um, I'm all for new games. Um, GTA V, I think, is one of the most iconic games um, in the last decade. Uh, it is a fantastic game. The add-ons, I, I kind of fell off from playing it, but um, I'm sure the add-ons are, are great. The multiplayer is just absolutely ridiculous. People running in gangs and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, and you can now you can now become part of the police force too. They just added yeah. that like as an official I'm thing. Over. Yeah. yeah, I've seen so many videos on Instagram of, of some really really crazy stuff, um, and I think they're going on in the right direction. I don't think you need to you know allocate money or time to remaster um, or just keep adding on. I want a whole another game. Hopefully they've been working on it, you know, secretly or at least some dynamics of a new game or anything where it comes out in two or three years. Now, you know, waiting five years for a new game is, is not going to be fun. But, um, you know, I think that uh, I think it's time for a new GTA. And let me just say one other thing. I've never actually played like owned and played Red Red De Red Red Redemption. And I know that is a fantastic game. So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to scoop that, too. Yeah, listen, man. I, you know, me and me and Angelico basically had to sneak and play GTA games behind the scenes because growing up we weren't even allowed to play. <laughs> I'm sure. I know hockey. You have a whole nother story. We talked about this on stream before, but yeah, yeah. Uh, like, GTA oh, yeah. is a, is a classic, and the new IP would be great. Uh, Angelico, do you think this was a, this was a smart move? Um, smart. I get it's necessary. Um, I don't understand the appeal of wanting to remake. I understand Red Dead Redemption One. But a remake GTA 5, I mean, the game is still going strong today, uh, the GTA Online. So to me, it just felt like kind of a money-grubbing thing that Rockstar likes to do, which is remake very popular games, sell it at the full price. Um, and we've seen this, again, by numerous game. The only difference is those other game companies usually put out a game. They don't wait eight years to put out another installment. Um, so that's the only thing that I, I, you know, Rockstar is one of the top developers, um, especially open world wise. They really are, um, you know, in the upper echelon class. And so I just want to see another GTA installment on um, the Red Dead Redemption one, you know, I, I do think has appeal to it. That's the only one I would probably remake. No need to remake the other GTA, but you know, Marsman said it, the GTA trilogy, which could have been a really cool, uh, remake was an absolute failure. Um, and so, you know, maybe it was the right to kind of pull back on reinstallments and put all their time. And hopefully it's not starting a GTA six, it's continued development of GTA six, but who knows when it comes to rockstar, it's gonna be Again, I, you know, you bro. said five years, 
aren't we at like at year eight for GTA five? Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's gonna be it's, like yeah. It's, it's gonna be G, it's gonna be twenty thirty nine, bro, when this game comes out. So like when are we like are we gonna hit the decade mark before six comes out? Like that's crazy. I'm hoping just in two or three years the new game comes out. I know. Yeah. I know. That's I it's, it's, it's just insane, dude. It's insane. Um now obviously the the question is GTA six. We've seen some classic area cities where GTA games have been made before and the rumors that people kept saying for GTA, because that was the thing. There's a lot of rumors that GTA 6 was already in development and they had rumor to be so massive in scale that it, you can include a bunch of different maps from the old games. But if I if if I were to ask you guys, and we can make this quick, which map would you rather play on for GTA 6? I'm bringing it back to San Andreas. So if you're going, if I'm giving you options, San Andreas, Liberty City, Vice City, I, if I was choosing, if I was Rockstar, Bring it back to San Andreas. That was probably one of the most popular of all the GTA games and get everyone back on that hype of playing San Andreas would be insane. I'm sure everybody would be hyped about that. What do you guys think? Haki, what map would you want to play on? San Andreas, Liberty City, or Vice City? Um, I mean, I, I did like San Andreas. I mean, I liked all of them. All, they were all good. Um, I, I like Vice City, though. I mean, if I had to choose from the old ones, it'd be Vice City. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to see like a new area, maybe somewhere in, you know, another place in like South America or something like that, like Brazil or I, I don't know, just, I'd want something new. I, I wouldn't want them to rehash, uh, uh, you know, an old map, but if they were to bring it back, I, I would, I would probably go with Vice City. Well, Joe what do you think? Yeah, I'd probably say Vice City, um, but I, I would love, again, they talk about how vast and again, Rockstar is really good at creating vast maps and interactive stuff. If they can get a multiple, you know, couple cities, um, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, if you can make a map that has you travel, like fast travel, and all of a sudden you're in San Andreas or you're in Vice City or Liberty City, like, that would be pretty crazy. And I think everyone would be extremely happy and hyped about it because it'll be hit on the, you know, nostalgia strings as well as have a lot of new content that you can possibly do with returning to those areas. Um, all right, let's jump to the next qu next topic, really. 3 for 3, going back to an Halo topic here. 3 for 3 is working together with PC modders to bring back lost levels, vehicles, game modes, and armors from the old games and being brought to the Master Chief Collection. So what I'm talking about here are actually levels like from the story, um, even armors that were from like the Halo 1, Halo 2 showcases when they first announced them, like those story missions they never, never got to play. Um, so they're going to bring those back and put those in Master Chief Collection and now they'll be able to have basically um, all the things that were cut from the game originally from Hail 2, Hail 1, even Hail 3 in some senses, brought back to now the current state of Halo Master Chief Collection. Um, and what when I'm looking at the whole Halo community, and, and granted, Halo community has been seeing a lot of dark days recently, especially with a lot of stuff with the lack of maps and content. Um, and it's been pretty like extremely negative, like some in some cases toxic. Um, now, what I think that when I saw this announcement, and I was looking at all these uh, Halo community members, they were excited, all right? They were elated because they're bringing back content to from the old games that people never got to see before. So this is brand new and something new to try for everybody. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. Um, and the question that kind of goes into, into the atmosphere now is, can 343 now use PC modders to try to bring content, levels, armor, and things like that to Halo Infinite? Because if they've proven they could do with these old games, that means they could easily work alongside them and now bring that to the current game that is now lacking content. Because I don't think anyone's here slamming the table saying, where was that Halo 1 armor from the demo? Like, no one was slamming the table. Like, I want that level we never got to play in Halo 2 E3 Showcase. But they did it. Everyone's slamming the table for Halo Infinite to have content. So if you can now, you know, the question I have, do you think it's a smart idea for three for three to say all right we've proven that we can do this effectively let's now get the community pc modders to help us now bring content to halo infinite that was found in previous games because they've shown that they can do it pc modders are capable and if you watch the videos online they only have armors from older games brought or updated for halo infinite and have it running on a pc like if they could do that without backing from three for three imagine they had the resources that the company actually has itself like so do you think it'd be smart for them to do this? Um, and I'll, I'll go with you, Angelico, first. Do you think it's smart for them to use the community, the modders, to help them out with this? Well, I think it's a test 
run that they're trying because it's going on the Master Chief Collection because, quite frankly, if it's a failure, it's not really going to do much. Um, and that's why I think they're starting off in the Master Chief Collection. Um, but again, I, uh, this is my... <laughs> this is the issue with 343. These are like ideas that have just popped up in their mind now, which have been things that you've been talking about other content creators have been talking about for months right so it's just like it always feels like they're behind uh, what they should be doing um and they're always late to the party and so to me you know when it comes to infinite i really don't we talked about what will help infinite is by completing forge so get forge done and get forged out to the community and then they could talk about using the the modders and the people who work on Forge because you do run into when you know with a PC to console there is a gap between there. It's not just like hey PC modders can make this and it works on console, right? So you know you do have to kind of go through that to see if it works. Um, but I think what will help Infinite right away is Forge, right? So get Forge done, make Forge what it's supposed to be, and let the community help you in that way um doing the modding thing like i don't think it hurts i don't think it's a bad idea i don't think people should be like you know slamming 343 for trying it you know but my only yeah. knock on 343 is there always seems to be behind when are they gonna be you know like this is something that should have been going on already well you know i think I mean? it actually i think it's already done like that's the point like they they're showing that they're essentially what they're doing is they're showing like a video like a series are showing like these are the content that they did find they were able to bring into MCC, and now they're going to start like you know putting this out there. Yeah, now, which is that, fine for yeah. for Chief the, the Master Chief Collection, you know, to add a little bit of flair to it, similar to what they added before with the new game mode. Um, but to me, Forge Forge is is the key, to making sure that they get their these game modes out and these this content stuff out on time um, is no question the biggest thing that Infinite needs done. Mm -hmm. And hockey. So, what do you think, man? Do you think they should do, they should be doing this? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna piggyback off of what uh, Angelic Hill said, and, and I think um, one of his, you know, the, one of the biggest things he was pushing is community is key, right? Whether it is Forge or it is the PC monitors helping out uh, Master Chief, um, it is you know huge that they get the community kind of into the things that they're you know trying to do, and and I think again, Angelic Hill's big point here is that um halo infinite should have came out with multiplayer forge you know uh the the, the co-op campaign um so i mean like you said you know they're kind of behind they've been behind a little bit but um i think they should use the community as much as they can so i, I i'm gonna be positive with the the pc monitors you know helping out uh, master chief like Langella Kill said, if it, if it works out, then they can really, um, you know, help out with other things in Infinite. But Infinite should be the main focus. Um, it's, you know, it's their uh, it's their game right now. It's, it's the main game yeah. they got right now. If they don't start doing stuff, uh, I said it the other day on stream, it's it's starting to get a little boring. So I'm, I'm hoping that things uh, things really tick up in the in the community aspect you know yeah and, and one thing i'll say and then this kind of came out today too they actually showed a screenshot of uh apparently a forge map was leaked and it was a remake of narrows from halo 3 and it's showing that they are testing that out like they have the forge community is making remakes of old maps and putting that out there and 343 is kind of working through to see like hey does this stuff war oh, look and i was like everyone was like what map is this? And I looked at the picture and I was like, that's Narrows, man. Like, I mean, that's, can I just ask yeah. you guys, do you feel this is kind of a do or die moment for, for Halo well, Infinite? I when think it comes I, to this Forge and co-op oh to my God, get yeah. them to the campaign and Battle Royal. Like this gap right here to get Forge and co-op is probably its most important, besides the release, its most important content dump uh, in 343's life cycle. Yeah, do you guys I, agree? I, I, my thing is this, man. I I said this. I've been saying this for months, and I said that I had a whole content video about questioning whether it's Halo dying or not. And I literally said to solve the problem that everyone has is to come out with Forge. Forge is the answer. And I and people say, well, that's not just Forge. Yeah, sure. I guess you could say it's not just Forge because co-op campaign and stuff. But if Forge comes out, the people's fear of not having games, uh, game modes to play, or or content on maps 
That, that goes out the window. That means you have an yeah. entire community where now you have the power to make whatever map you want to yeah, play and as three, well four, as game three, They can't be restrictive. They, if they let, put out Forge, people, they need to let people be creative and use and let the people experience the game modes. And, and, they cannot and, and, be yeah. restrictive. And take and take the maps that they make and put it into the main game. I'm just telling you, like, just do it. You you can easily do that. And they did that in Halo 5 They because yeah. they sucked at making maps in Halo 5. So they said, all right, let the community make big team battle maps. Every map on big team battle was a community made map. It was not made by 3 for 3. Because remember, they didn't start the game with big team battle on the rotation. So they basically had a scrap for maps. And so they basically asked the community, can you make us big team battle maps? And they did. Made them like six or seven. All of them were like, de or some of them were decent. Some of them were not the best, but they made they made maps. And all of a sudden, now you have community made maps, and people you know, enjoyed them and whatever. Like you, you can easily do that. Like, and I agree. Like this is the part where you come out with Forge, you come out with co op campaign, and you got to hit the ground because now people are going to start saying, well, it's almost going to be a year, right? In November, it's going to be, uh, uh, not no, uh, yeah, in, in you know around this time, November it was when the multiplayer first came out. So, you know, you guys got to come up with something here, right? And that's kind of the th that's kind of the issue. Um, and even three for three, like they they are actually trying to fix some stuff, give hockey some hope here. They they did fix the bug. They're, they're fixing the bug that came out where you don't go up in rank if you win a match. That came, that happened. He, they fixed it. They realized it was a it was a bug happened. They fixed it, and I was just like, you guys need to. Fix it. Like, am I gonna be? Diamond, you know, am I gonna be diamond six right now? I, I, I don't know. I all I do know is that they fixed that, and I saw that today, and I thought of hockey because we were playing the other day, and that literally happened yeah. to him. And I was like, what? Like I never seen that before. And it was apparently that there were some cases where that's hurt, and he was one of those few that it happened to. So that's a that's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> let's jump to let's jump to the last last topic here about mobile gaming. This is the new biggest trend that's hitting the gaming industry and mobile gaming is becoming bigger and bigger especially with diablo immortal um basically has been getting hundreds of thousands of dollars daily um and giving that right to blizzard for a mobile diablo game um and basically just a, this is gr growing their incentive to now even expand this and i think they're bringing diablo immortal to be be able to be played by pc as well um which is not really it's a, it's a mobile game same thing can be said with Mario Kart Tour has officially hit $1 billion in its entire lifespan in amount of money they've gained. So it seems that a lot more companies are going to be continuing to grow into mobile gaming and having their own type, uh, their own IPs have a variation that goes into it. So, and there's even rumors that Bungie is possibly making a Destiny mobile game. Uh, I, I it, those are just rumors. I saw some things that like rumors about it. It's not official. So, the question I have to you guys is, what do you think is the next game to come to the mobile gaming scene? And, uh, Hockey, I'll let you go first here. What do you think is the next game coming to the mobile game scene? Yeah, so, um, kind of like you said, mobile gaming's been, um, kind of, you know, blowing up a little bit. I know, um, you can either get, like, a Backbone or a, what, what was it called, a Steam Deck, or? Oh, the Steam, so, but the Steam Deck is different. Like, Steam Deck is, well, and that, that I should make that clear. So, what I mean by mobile gaming, it's not like, gaming like the switch on the go or the steam deck on the go essentially mobile gaming is like phone like playing phone games right playing a game like mario Kart tour is a phone app that you download and you can spend money on getting like you know it's like the freemium like you can you can pay money to get some stuff to add to your character or whatever get cars or you can grind for a hundred hours you can grind get, yeah get grind for hours upon hours to get that mm -hmm. stuff and more more often people will pay the few bucks or uh, more than just a few because Diablo Mortal makes you spend a lot to get that stuff but it just depends on the game itself but so Haki what do you think so when it comes to mobile gaming what do you think is coming next man to the to the to the, uh, to the Apple store yeah so just just straight up mobile gaming I know like Fortnite's been there so um there are some big games going dude I mean I don't know if you guys can guess mine but Overwatch 2 just came out the beta so I'm thinking Overwatch is about to be a mobile game that'd be fire <laughs> And by fire, you mean dumpster fire? <laughs> no, <Nah>, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know the game is the game. Gets, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Overwatch. Uh, oh gosh, Overwatch, God. Yeah, you know, I get a heart. I get a heart attack on the road. I'll get a heart attack in in my phone, not even just at home. Oh my God, uh, Langelico, what do you think is the next mobile? I game? think that's a very good guess because um, 
again, it, 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 those kind of hero shooters where you just punt and mash um, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I don't have a specific game. I just know that, man, Overwatch is a good guess. That was something that I was going to guess, so I don't want to kind of copy on him. But if there was another game, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, that's a tough one for me. I, I just going to say have, this about mobile yeah. gaming. When you get a mobile game, if those who have not got it, just anticipate a lot of microtransactions, oh, yeah. anticipate a lot of lottery style uh type of transactions which means if it's not a skin and it's like weapons and stuff like that you're gonna need to like there's gonna be a percentage on that getting stuff so like diablo the big problem was getting legendary gear you had to funnel in money upon money upon money and not even get it at times and if you didn't want to they'll say hey you don't have to pay money to get it that's what they'll say but for you not to pay money, you have to grind hours upon hours upon hours to get an opportunity to get it. So to me, I think mobile gaming is growing. Obviously, all that Slack that Diablo got, hundreds of millions of dollars um, that Diablo got. And Overwatch makes a lot of sense for them to do that as well. Um, to me, it's mobile gaming and the microtransaction era is, I just think, bad for gaming good for profits but bad for gamers like us um because it's just and and it entices it, gaming it entices gaming companies to put out not full games yep no and, and i can agree with you there man uh if i i have two possibilities uh let's stick with nintendo nintendo has been pumping out their top ips to be on mobile they already did pokemon they did mario Next common is Le Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda Pocket Edition or something along those lines, like a like a over-the-top Legend of Zelda game on the mobile. Like I honestly might end up getting it if they, they did actually come out with one of those. Yeah, that's a good guess. Yeah. That, that's a classic, and I could see them doing that. Second one, Gears Tactics. I think Gears Tactics, that, that strategy Gears of War game, something that could be easily because I don't you can't play a you could technically play like a, a Gears game, but that's like too much mechanic, too much button pressing going on. I think Gears Tactics seems more more like it because Xbox hasn't dove into that mobile gaming yet, and now they're about to buy Activision and get access to the big money maker like Candy Crush. They'll have the ability to now own the mobile market. So uh, Final Fantasy as well. Final, yeah, Final Fantasy. Yeah, that's another good one. I think the Final Fantasy. Yeah. I if it was the classic like uh, you know play uh, you know turn turn based uh, Final Fantasy, that's I think that I, would I, be I would that say. would be a I really cool idea. Cool. Bringing it back to that stuff, I just think that like Gears Tactics, like a strategy game, makes sense. Yeah. You know, Legend of Zelda, like Pocket Edition, like old style, makes sense because it's over the top and easy to do on a phone. Um, I see, I saw kids in high school that was modding their phones, playing old Pokemon games. So I'm like, hey, you could easily easily do that on Legend of Zelda uh, legally. So, um, but yeah, uh, so that's gonna be it for the show, guys. We covered a lot of major topics today. We, uh, you know, obviously we do this every single week. Um, and if you have any Discord questions or Twitter questions, please join us on our social medias, and those are located in the description below. Please, if you have not done so, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And you can always go back and watch our old episodes, as well as some previous videos we've done. And we live stream daily on YouTube and on Twitch. So please join us there, too, because we have a lot of fun playing a lot of different types of games. But if and nothing else, guys, you're all good here? I'm all set, man. All right, guys. Well, this is Morris Band signing off for the night. Peace out. <laughs>